Hey everyone, there are some really cool things you can do in Unity that can take your scene from looking something like this to something more like this, and a lot of it doesn't take much effort at all. So in this short tutorial series, we're going to look at how to add lighting, particle effects, and post-processing to make your game feel just a little bit more exciting. Let's get started. Now first off, one of the things you're going to need in order to do this is the Universal Render Pipeline. If you have Unity Hub, when you start your game, you can just select the 2D Universal Render Pipeline build. However, if you've already made your game and you don't have that, not to worry, we can still set that up. Now if you didn't set up your project with the Universal Render Pipeline, or if yours is just giving you trouble, I'll just quickly go over how to fix that. First off, you're going to want to head up to the top, go to Window, and then head on down to Package Manager. You're going to want to make sure that you pick from the Unity Registry, not your project. And then over here in the corner, you're just going to type in Universal, and the Universal RP should appear. You can click Install. Now with the URP downloaded, we're going to open up the opportunity to do things like lighting, particles, and post-processing, but first we have to set it up. So let's head down to our Assets window where we can right-click, go to Create, and then down near the bottom you should see Rendering. We're going to have a lot of options here, but we're just going to take the top one, URP Asset with 2D Renderer. This will create a new file. I'm just going to call mine URP Asset. And that will create two separate files. One is the renderer and the other will be the asset itself. We're just going to have to plug these into a few spots and then we'll be ready to make them work. So let's head up to the top where we can go to edit, project settings, and we're going to start off in the graphics window here. And here you just want to go to the scriptable render pipeline settings, click the little circle here and add your URP asset. This will set it up so that our graphics now have access to it. Next, we're going to head to Quality, and once again, we're just going to head to the Render Pipeline Asset and load the asset that we've created. Now, in most cases, that's probably the only steps you're going to need to take. However, if you are running into any sort of troubles, you might need to convert your current assets to the URP. To do this, you can head to Window, Rendering, and Render Pipeline Converter. Now here you can select which file types you want to convert. I will just warn you that this is an irreversible process, so I would make a backup before doing anything like this. If you want to know more about the converter, you can also check out the Unity API on the topic, as it will give you all the details you need. Once you've selected the files you want to convert, you can initialize and convert. Now that the URP is all set up, we can actually put some lights in our project. So let's head over to the hierarchy, where we can right-click, Head on down to Light, and for now let's start off with a Spotlight 2D. These are most useful if you want to create lamps, torches, or those sorts of things. First off, this will have added a component, but at the moment it will look like it's not doing anything. The reason for that is because currently my scene and player, in their sprite renderer, are currently set with a material that is unlit. You can change that by just clicking the circle here and going to Sprite Lit default. With that done, we've now got some light. And if I zoom in here, you can see that our spotlight is indeed illuminating the player ever so slightly. Now, we can play with our settings a little bit by clicking on the Light 2D option. First of all, let's just add some intensity. Already, you can see that made a big difference. And then just by playing with our radius, we can create the, a larger outer radius and change the inner radius as well. And suddenly you can see that that intensity is far more than we want. So let's just put that back to one. All right, we've now created a nice environmental light that is cast on all the objects nearby. We can move these around. We can also duplicate them in order to create more lights throughout the scene. At this point, we could also make one of these a child of the player. And then if you move the player around, the light will move with him. Just make sure that while clicked on your 2D light, you zero out your position in the transform so that the light actually follows the player. Now at this point, I'm just going to turn off my gizmos so that they aren't in the way and we can really see what the light's doing. And you'll notice that it's creating an undesirable bloom kind of effect on the player himself. We can fix this problem by making it so that the light no longer targets the player. So in target sorting layer, we can unclick player. All right, now you don't have that player sorting layer, so let's just quickly add that on here. So head to our sorting layer, and we're just going to add an additional one. You can type in player there, 
and then make sure that your player actually gets set to that layer. Now one other really cool thing you can do with the spotlight is make it feel a little bit more natural. So if we click on the intent on the color here, we can change it to sort of a orangey ready kind of a light and now it starts to feel more like a flame. We can now move the player around and it feels like he's maybe carrying a torch that is following him through the level. Now the spotlight and global light aren't our only options. When we right click we could also go to light and add for example a freeform light. You can choose the shape you would like but they all work roughly the same. At this point let's just turn off that other light for the moment. At this point with the freeform light, we can just edit the shape of it in order to make light that is cast in a certain direction. And so this is especially useful, say, if you want to create the effect of light coming down from the sky. This now casts the light downward, and if you want it to feel a little bit more dramatic, there we go. So we've now got this light coming down from the sky, that sort of thing. We can add to the fallout, or take away from the fallout strength, depending on how much of a blur you want on the outside here. And again, if we want, we could make it so that it doesn't target the player. Of course, now he has no light, so let's turn his own light back on. And so the player is still within light, but now our scene is getting this shaft of light coming down from the ceiling. Finally, you can create your own shape if you want. So if you went to light, you could also pick the sprite light. And this one automatically loads a sparkle sprite, but you could pick different shapes that you want to put in, and you can have your own masks for light that is just in a specific shape. All right, that about does it for this video. In the next one, we'll look at how to use particle effects to create some torches in our scene. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.